Live! Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live AMA where we answer your reverse engineering questions. If you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. Lots more reverse engineering content there. With that, let's get into it. All right, so um, we have one which is probably only applicable to uh, Carson and uh, Rattle here, uh, which is what are the coolest malware techniques you've seen this year? Uh, I don't know if Jordan has any answers for this, but uh, I know you two will. Uh, cool. That depends coolest. on what you think cool is. I, I think it's up to you. Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> difficult one there are none oh, yeah it could be the most right. most technically interesting like what was like the most advanced thing maybe was another good way to, to do it might be one so yeah. yeah there's yeah i i have a few things that i can say but maybe maybe somebody else wants to go first i could ponder on Kirsten, it a little do you longer have any? no Oh, no. oh, you seem to put your hand <laughs> my, mind is, my mind is blank i'm trying to think of oh no then, then i'll cool give you some time i have everything to talk about so first thing I'm extremely disappointed by the lack of technical creativity in malware these days. So when I was young, it was all about morphing engines, like metamorphism, polymorphism, like advanced shit. And people would like, that was the whole deal. That was the whole thing, like write super cool new techniques and battle with the AV suckers. And all of that is gone. You're just, it's just a business. Like you, it, if well, it's because it's a business now. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make sense to spend more than you need to. You spend the bare minimum to get the profit yeah. you want, and then you're done. You put no more work into it. So this is why, technically, I don't actually have that many interesting, cool things to talk about, except for the stuff that red teamers write, because that <laughs> shit is always. Ah, uh, they, they use like the the most fancy WMI persistence techniques and the <laughs> the the most recent the most recent implementation of the most recent paper about how you can, I don't know, move laterally all and the thing is, because they do that, you can smell a red teamer from ten miles away. I guess it, I, I look at a sample and I say, it's a red team exercise. Because <laughs> no nobody who's actually a threat actor puts that much love into their malware it's and yeah so i don't remember exactly but there was one uh one piece of red teamer malware that used pretty sophisticated wmi persistence specifically that took me a while to figure out but i'm, I'm not sure i want to count it so the the actual coolest thing this year that i've seen is something entirely different it's um a distribution technique and what they do is they put a, it's a PDF, and it has a little image that says CAPTCHA. It's just an image that says CAPTCHA with a box name. It's super cheap. It's, it's terrible. And there's a, it, it's a link. It's a hyperlink that leads you eventually to malware. And um, what they also have in the same PDF document is a bunch of links, like about 20 to 40 links, to other PDF documents that are similar but not the same. And all of them have hard-coded keywords in them. So they're all, it's, and the campaign is massive. You have tons of these documents, and there's like, almost like one document for every Google search that you can imagine. And because they each link to each other, they have insane page rank. So what will happen <laughs> is, when people Google for, I don't know, um, password manager, there will be a PDF document linking to malware that will be fitted to these keywords and it will have a high page rank because there will be all these other mal docs that have been linking to it. So what they're doing is they're just uploading tons and tons of PDF documents to compromised hosts and they let Google do the distribution for them. Like just, just page rank is doing their distribution and users will search for something, find it, and then just, they, and users, will go through immense trouble to install malware. Like they, they will do insane, they will download zip files. Oh, I have to prove it. Oh, I have to type in my password. Oh, I have to, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I want this. I really want this. And yeah, so this is, um, this is probably oh, the man. coolest technique that I've seen. <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> Though I guess so not technical. <laughs> I mean, it's not a technical thing, but yeah, very cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Josh says that it's called uh, SEO poisoning. That's his like. His take yeah, I, it's not a new. It's not new or anything. I just 
it's it was expertly done and it um i mean i have some visibility into how many of these are actually happening because i work at big cyber as sergey likes to say and <laughs> it's very effective it, oh, it works yeah. really well yeah. it works yeah yeah there's there's definitely been a move away from for delivery i mean that's, this is like one interesting thing that we because we just see a shit ton of malware and like where it comes from it's very interesting to see the delivery mechanisms changing like every couple of years they change there's like um we even did a couple talks about this a couple of years ago so there's like first you had um documents that were like uh uh like like basically just macro documents and emails that was like a big thing for a while still is still, still is a, a thing but you know that was a big thing then uh they moved back to exploits which, which used to be big in like the 2000s like early 2000s like exploits and docs so like people like rehashed old exploits and found new ones and then that kind of like the security industry responded to that so they went back to like macros but more like different ways of launching macros and now we've seen uh like what rattles talking about like non-email delivery mechanisms becoming much more prevalent. Uh, the, the things that we see the most are like the Discord stuff where it's again, it's just tricking people into running an application yep. basically. Um, SEO poisoning, I hadn't seen what you're talking about, but I mean, we don't have visibility into that kind of delivery stuff. So I, I hadn't seen that. That's very cool as well. Um, and we see a lot of like, um, like drop sites now where uh, not 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 SEO poisoning necessarily, but just like applications that people would want. Um, I'm not sure if it's maybe just because our our channel got more popular with game hackers, so we see more uh, backdoor game hacking tools on Unpack Me. I'm not really sure what what the reason is, but we see so much of that now, like um, cheats that are backdoored or like tools that are backdoored. Which used to be, I mean, if if anybody is as old as I am, <laughs> Jordan over there, um, back in the day, that was the delivery mechanism, right? You would download something off a torrent and it would be backdoored, but that largely went away for the last five, five years, more than eight years. That's pretty much gone away, and now it seems like it's back, but it's not torrents anymore. It's like discord drop links or uh things like that lime wire yeah exactly lime, lime wire. wire yeah if anyone oh, remembers yeah. that <laughs> yeah. anyway that's uh uh oh right uh we we're supposed to do uh interesting techniques uh or interesting malware karsten did you uh did you have any sorry no i was just no <laughs> <laughs> but I actually remember the one that Reddit was talking about. I think that was good loader, yeah? But, um... A do, do loader or good loader? Goot with a T? Goot with a T? I think. With a T, okay. Yeah, there, there's goo loader, I just realized, and goot loader. G O O T yes. loader. Yes. yes? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but my day to day job, I actually do not uh, check so much uh, into the details of uh, how malware works because usually we just write signatures so um what do you do you barely get an overview of the file and see what you can grab to detect it and that's it so i'm usually not spending too much time and in, in, in the details so there was a kind of related question about whether i've seen somebody specifically targeted binja i think that's kind of an advanced technique of like targeting particular tools um and the only people i've seen specifically targeting binja are game companies <laughs> Um, you know, they have like their, their block list. So we've had it. We were, we were so excited. We're like, we did it. We made it like Blizzard or Safari, who it was somebody like Activision, somebody had like dropped in a, uh, you know, binary ninja.exe was added to their list of like banned software or something that would put you in like in a, you know, shadow band or something i would feel pretty um, good about that too that's uh right i was like all right yeah, like, we're, nice. we're, we're, we're which is funny because whichever game company it was also had several licenses so it's it's hilarious to me that like <laughs> the developers at the companies have licenses for binja but then also the people yeah it's 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 fantastic um but like the the bottom line i think is it's really easy to break any tool and like Ida, Ghidra, Binge, it doesn't matter what it is, I can break it real hard with like very little effort. Um, so it's it's interesting to me though, because like 
malware, I think, is especially funny. Uh, back when I used to do, which again was a long time ago, like 15 years since I was regularly doing malware analysis, um, it was to me interesting that you walk this balance between doing re really cool, interesting stuff, but then also being easy to detect. Like the weirder your techniques are, like packing your binary is a great example, right? Like encrypting or packing your binary before it was, you know, there's always been, is it common for normal apps to do it? But just if malware does it, it's really easy to detect. Like zip the file. Does it get smaller? No, great. It's already packed or encrypted. Like it takes no effort for you to like find this out. Um, and that used to be actually a pretty good signal that something was malicious. Uh, and so like the weirder your stuff is, if your if your binary doesn't even open with an analysis tool, well, that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty good signal. It's bad, right? So if you're just trying to answer the question of is this bad or not, um, then the more crazy advanced stuff you do, um, then the easier it is to actually detect. And so it's really fun that you have to sort of choose like how obfuscated you want to be, how easy, or just how like how much, like I, they know I'm malware, but they don't know what I'm do. When, so how much time they could put into that. So, I don't know, I think that's an interesting trade-off. Yeah, there was a ransomware coach, Bora, uh, that had like the usual stuff that ransomware does, like deleting shadow volume copies and so on. And at some point they just um, removed all of the features one by one because we assume because uh, of, to get rid of the detections. Because... Um, Anti-detection. Yeah. Just stop being malicious. That's brilliant. Yeah, at the end it was just a shell of what it was in the beginning. It just had no features anymore, like barely. Well, that's why there's so many like second stage loaders, right? Because like the loader has very little, the only feature it has is get more stuff. And then you can yeah. choose what other modules to kind of load onto it. Like a lot of the APT stuff tends to be that way, right? It's a very modular system. We the, see that. The, there was one. Acme, like uh, <clears throat> just the, because we don't, it's not a sandbox. So we don't reach out for other second stages. So like if you, a lot of the first stage stuff that we see, we're good at profiling because there's nothing else cluttering up the analysis like there's no other modules or second stages and like it's crazy how many of these things are like three lines they're basically just like open url download url load into memory and like we we have all these fun names for them sean <laughs> and yo what's going on josh uh sean and i have like fun names for them because they're not really like part of the malware family they're just basically there to evade like on disk detection to to basically look as benign as possible so that wraps it up. Big thanks to our panel of experts. You can go check out their socials here. Thank you very much. And if you guys want to see more reverse engineering content like this, in-depth tutorials, live streams, your questions answered, go check out our Patreon. Lots more stuff like that there. And stay tuned for the next question.